Hey guys, it's Melanie here from Christian Y Books and More, and I'm here to give you guys my top five star ratings for Christian books. Turns out there's about 12 of them that I did this year, and they're all five star ratings, so that's what I like to give to you guys today. Um, some inventory um, stats that I kind of wanted to share with you guys um, was a couple things. I'm just going to put my coffee down. Um, I did about, out of the 12, I had, I think it was one adult fiction, Christian fiction book, um, nine YA, and out of those YA, there were uh, six historical fiction, there was um, one YA dystopian, two contemporary suspense, and one romantic suspense, and those are all YA. I, on my Goodreads, actually accomplished my 52 uh, books. I did read, however, over 60 because I also DNF'd some. And when I DNF them, I delete them usually off of my Goodreads or I will write them and kind of talk about them on my Goodreads a little later. Um, so sometimes I don't put dates in them. Um, but mostly I read and reviewed and starred about 52 books this year um, in 2016, which is awesome for me because I am a mom of five, as most of you know. I did take a university course last uh, in the fall for the fall semester. Um, we are in the ministry and I did launch a new book um, in 2016, the end of 2016, that I was working throughout the year for. Some changes are going to be coming to that, um, and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to move forward with that. I am excited about some of the changes, so we'll see how that goes, and I'll, of course, keep you guys posted. Now, for the 52 books, I just wanted to give you guys an update on like how I star things, and of course, this personal preference is the most important for me. Also, there's things like Christian faith and those elements that are really important to me, the writing aspects, um, how engaging it is, the story plot lines, the subplots, and of course the characters. And with all of those in mind, I usually will write a book. Sometimes books don't get five star ratings, even though technically they should, but it's the faith aspects that maybe put that down a little bit. Or the faith is there, but the writing aspects are a little bit under par from, in my opinion. And everybody's got different opinions and sometimes I read a book and I'm like, wow, everybody rated it higher. And, and sometimes I read a, a book higher and everybody's like, oh, you rated that really high. And a lot of that is in the balance of those aspects that I put into when I review the books. So having said that, out of the 52 books or over, I had um, 12 five-star ratings. I had about over 24 star ratings. I think it was around 27, I believe, um, but that's give or take the DNFs and stuff like that that um, is the, in the overall pile. And then uh, 15 three star reads. So most of them fell in the four star. Some I rated high and some I rated low, uh, lower, and those don't disqualify them. I don't even include the two and under because usually those are the ones that I really just one didn't like and two or there was major issues that I just was like you know it's it's two and under um whether that's plot pacing uh major issues or character issues that were not developed in completely whether it was faith issues um all sorts of different stuff because I rate and review Christian books that are, are out there to be Christian. So um, keep those in mind when I give these and I'm so surprised, I, I'm sure you guys will be, with my actual top 12 five star rating books. I was quite shocked to see what I did actually put as five stars and I'm going to share that with you guys now. The first one is the adult book. Um, and out of all of the series, this is the only one I rated five stars. I loved this first book, and actually all of them so far I liked. The second one in this book that I read um, this year did not hit a five star. This writing, however, and the pacing was spot on. The story idea was perfect, like with the plot and the subplot twists. I love the fact that the romance wasn't completely an... Um, 
the entire thing that, that you focus on, but definitely an element that was in there. But more the mystery, the suspense, the action really took you, and I love that. Also, the characters in here were really, really, really spot on. Olivia and Wade were perfect, their vulnerabilities were perfect, the situations involving them were perfect, and the characters surrounding them were really well written that I had to rate this a five star. So that's the first one, Olivia. Um, and Wade's story and always watching the first of the elite guardians by Lynette Eason So that's that one and then I had Golden braid by Melanie Dickerson and not all of Melanie Dickers Dickerson's book made my top five of the series that I read this year And I was introduced to this series this year. So of course I read most of them but not all of them made it into the top five or top 12 of the five star ratings. This one, however, was. And the reason why is so many elements in this book were really amazing. I loved the story, of course, the Rapunzel story, um, but how Melanie, she, the faith aspects in here are on point. There's not really any magic, even though there was a character in here that could have been used in a magician sort of way, magician sort of way, that she didn't go that route. Of course, she was still true to the storyline, of Rapunzel but made it into something very realistic, something that you can really um, read as a Christian and it was just awesome. The characters and the story plot in here was just awesome as well and I had to rate this a five star. The next we have Andrew Clavin's series. This series was awesome. Not all of the books also didn't make it. I still have to read number four in the series but two of them did make the five star uh, rating that I gave it. And this one is the first book, The Last Thing I Remember. It is extremely action packed, high paced, great plot book with cool characters that you really cling to. Um, and you really just want to find out what's going on. You really are invested in this story and it continues like that throughout the series. There's books that I liked better than the others, of course, and that's why we have the rating. So this one made the top five star rating, and that is The Last Thing I Remember by Andrew Clavin. I do want to read more books from Andrew Clavin, and he has other ones out there, so we'll see how those fare in the years to come. The next one was, I didn't rate a lot of this series high. This one, however, is just awesome. This book is like, like I say, inky gold because the way it's the writing itself that was so good. I mean, the characters, you already knew them. And of course you wanted to finish the series, but the writing itself. And in this one, the faith element is brought into a very allegoric message which was really, really good. So not only were the writing and the characters, the characters were already there throughout the, the series, but then the writing just hit this huge top-notch writing. And then on top of that, you had the faith elements that I really were yearning to have in this book series. So this made the five-star list, Seasons of Glory by Lisa T. Burgren. That's a dystopian. <laughs> then we have I'll just kind of give you, because not all of them did make it, but of the Hangenheim series, there was the Silent Songbird that I just showed you, and then we've got, I'll just kind of quickly show you, these ones made it to the five star list, and that was the Healer's Apprentice. Then I did also the Captive Maiden. I have other videos that I'll link in the description box that you can look at that explain this series a bit better and I do talk about it quite a lot so uh, this year then you probably know a lot about it already um, and the fairest beauty this one here I really loved because of the story elements um, and just the feels that you got in that book like it was awesome this was character that made it to the five star and this was the whole storyline itself and the elements of history that made it to the five stars for different reasons this hit the five stars um and again not all of them did make it one of the newest series of melanie dickerson's ones that i've read is the beautiful pretender this is a smash up of two different kinds of um fairy tale retellings that she puts together to create a story. 
and this made a five star rating list for me because of the characters, of course the faith elements in it, but they weren't as strong as much as the characters and the plot. The plot seemed to be the what pushed me to make this a five star rating. Um, and so that was what made this one hit that mark for me. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that one. The next is the Andrew Clavin series, again, the truth of the matter. And this was the character. So not only do we have the action and the faith element, we had then now, and he started to question more of the faith. So that sort of was drawn out more as well as the characters that came alive in this more so in this one than in the other ones. So because of that and the, and the characters and also the faith element coming to, to light a bit better in his writing, I rated this one a five star. So the last one on my well physical copy list because, um, and I mentioned it earlier was the silent songbird. Um, this was the final we thought of the Hangenheim series, but Melanie has confirmed this. We are going to have two more books that follow along uh, some of the characters that we've seen in throughout the Hangenheim series. This was the final one, and it hit a five star for me because of certain elements. Now, I almost put it at a four star, but I read online all the history and the the research that she, Melanie, had put into this on an article that she wrote um, for a blog uh, book giveaway sort of thing and it was incredible the amount of history she puts into these books and when I read this book after reading that I was like wow okay this this brings it to an ultimate level of five stars the amount of work that she put into this to make this book so real for the reader as well as relevant to that time was just incredible and I kind of I just respected that so much so not only do we get all the aspects that we already love about Melanie Dickerson but she just kind of puts so much more into the effort of the actual historical elements that you find in these books that make them personal and that actually she uses in the ultimate plot was spot on for me. So I really, really enjoyed that aspect of her and that this one made the five star four. The next two, so that's 10, 10 physical copy books. The next two I got from the library. And part of the reason why I don't like to do library book reviews is because then I don't have the physical copy to show you. I don't e read them on e-readers, so I couldn't even have the picture to show you. I love physical copy books. So we go to the library and I'll read a lot of library books that often don't make it to my um, lists for these. And in the Goodreads, I don't usually will write them. It just depends on if I can get them physical copy. But two of them that made the five star list that I really want to share with you guys is, and I don't have a picture to show you, I'm so sorry, and I still don't have my editing software stuff because I didn't get my computer that I wanted. So I have to wait until next year for that, you guys. And um, FYI, there was a video that I need to be making for someone who requested it and that may take a little bit of time because of the editing aspect. I could use a computer that I have that has an editing software on it and uh, but that crashes literally every five minutes so that's really not going to work for this. And also I could have used my MacBook which I bought but it was refurbished and didn't have um, the the movie thing that comes with the iMacs so or the MacBook Pros so I was pretty disappointed with that I have to actually buy it and I don't really want to do that quite yet especially after Christmas okay going back to those two books the two books were Murder Simply Brewed by Vanetta Chapman it was the Amish murder mystery and I did a review on that book maybe I'll link it in the description box below if I remember to do it but it was so good. I was really surprisingly shocked at how well she pulled that off. You know, you don't expect that to be in the Amish kind of spectrum of book reading. And I was really impressed by it. So I rated that a five star for multiple different reasons. Obviously, I love suspense and mystery and, and all that stuff. So one, it hit the mark on that. Two, it was an Amish book and had the faith elements to it. And then three, the characters were very, very well written. So of course that got a five star. Then the other one was, and this is another new to me author, was Jenny B. Jones. I had never read any of her books and they are hilarious. Her voice in writing 
hit the five star automatically for me. Um, then we had all the character issues and the realistic um, contemporary issues in books, which is similar to what I write. And she writes it in a very hilarious, easy to digest sort of way. And the voice alone was like definitely five stars. So that is my wrap up of the 12 five star books of 2016 that were Christian books. And I want to know what you, what your top 12 books were or what you rated five star how was that checking out like what your actual goodreads goals were and out of those what were the top five star ratings it's surprisingly shocking when i looked at how many books i read in the year out of 52 and or more actually but 52 in the goodreads and how many of them actually got five stars from me. So that was really cool for me to share with you guys. I am hoping to do a book haul soon and another video that I'm working on two people with two people on. So I'm excited about that. Keep that in mind and I'll keep you also updated with all my book related stuff. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.